Are identity politics actually ruining the left and the right? And which side uses it more? Man, this op-ed is going viral, and this guy really broke it down. Yeah, we got to talk about it. Uh, the Boston Globe op-ed is called Identity Politics is a Game the Left Can't Win. Opinion by Frederick DeBoer. He is a self-proclaimed and old-school Marxist liberal, um, but he, Andrew, was listing out the ways that, in a way that I guess he's not happy with his own party, and this went really viral, I think, on both sides. Right, right. So we're going to summarize and go through the top comments, give you our own thoughts. Please hit that like button. Uh, and check out other episodes of Hot Pop Boys as we got a little political one. I, I would say from silly to serious, Andrew, this is probably more on the serious side, right? I mean, this has to do with what? A national divorce, identitarian things. Are identity politics, uh, politics legit? Are they not legit? Uh, what is the role of government in governing these things even? I don't know, David. I think it's pretty silly. Because what is anybody going to do about it, huh? Everybody's just going to be read a bunch of articles and not take action. I'm just kidding. But anyways, we'll talk about it. Um, so long story short, Andrew, let's just summarize the article. He basically was saying that the left right now is going very like identitarian, right? Like there's a hierarchy of oppressed groups. Right. This group right. is more oppressed than that the group. The oppression but it, Olympics. But it's sort, but but it sort of matters like what you're talking about, right? Like this group might be oppressed in sports. This group might be oppressed economically, right? And they're trying to like rank all these things, and that the right is almost also playing identity politics by just saying, yeah, you know all that stuff that they're about. I'm against that. Right. So the right's identity is just anti-left. Whatever is left, I'm anti that, oh, and that's my identity, right? anti-woke, right? Right, anti-woke. And yeah, and it seems like what this guy's also trying to say, and you can read the whole article down below. It's not a long read. He's kind of saying like, yeah, and the left side is kind of alley-ooping it to the Republicans, to the right side, to let them slam it down because it's an easy slam right now. Right. We're making it easy for them. Is it a little bit like if we were in boxing and I'm trying to throw all these complicated like tricks and gimmicks and combos at you and then the guy just like blocks them all and just hits me with like a simple left jab? Like he's like the right is like counter punching the left. Yeah. Um, he also says the reasons that it's allowed to work is because 70% of the electorate of, is white, even though 70% of America is not white necessarily. Right. Because so, white people have a higher rate of voting than other groups. Yeah, so he's talking about of the voting group when the left side kind of vilifies or makes fun of white people or makes white people feel bad, you're actually making a lot of the people who vote feel bad. Right, because a lot of minorities have a relatively low voting rate. Exactly. Um, he also says that all college-educated people, including college-educated whites, generally are left-leaning, but that only 40% of the U.S. electorate actually graduated from college. Mm. Is, that, is that shocking? Yeah. But you know what I realized, Andrew? Actually, a lot of the older generation of people who are like, uh, let's say, for example, 80... They didn't, college was not as common for them back right, then. Right, they didn't all go to college, but a lot of them still vote. Yeah, and he also says the assumption that a more tannish skin mixed race America automatically means more liberal is being challenged by the stats because a lot of Latinos and uh, possibly some Asians are drifting right. Right, and so if you take, obviously the term Hispanic and Asian are huge, huge umbrella terms, but there's definitely both, th those groups are getting split. Yeah, yeah, They're and not a lot of... And a lot of people don't even understand. There's even like communism, like geopolitical, like almost these are like global historical things that if you're just the average American, mm -hmm. you don't even know what they're talking about. Like these are concerns from the motherland, you know. Um, somebody's saying, he also said that the left is attacking the American way and American exceptionalism and pointing out the flaws. And he agrees with those because he himself has always been a leftist. But he also does not agree that they're not, he's, they're not galvanizing anybody behind an actual grand vision that is realistic of what is to come in the future. Right, and I think that this is what uh, a lot of people talk about when you can, like, uh, man, what was that one clip of the newsroom, right, that went viral when he's just talking crap about America and saying, like, oh, America's behind, America's doing this, America's right. doing this, America's evil, America's history did this, America's da-da-da-da, we did this and this and this, America's in the dumps, but it's like, this guy in the article is saying, yeah, I don't know if that's the best thing to unite people. That right. we all agree America sucks. I don't know. I get what you're saying because sometimes I think you have to acknowledge the problem to find an, a solution, but I'm not sure if it's working. Yeah, he says that the right uses patriotism and capitalism, and even though he, as a leftist Marxist, is not the biggest fans of those things, what can I honestly say that the left is using and sum it up so easily? Mm. Um, he also talks about Hillary Clinton's thing. You know, it was stronger together at first, but the one that was more galvanizing but that ultimately caused her to lose was I'm with her because it was gender divisive mm. because, you know what I mean, it almost like made it so it was like, yo, vote for me because I'm about to make history as the first 
first woman to win. Uh, by the way, guys, this is just his article. I'm not saying I fully agree or agree with him. Um, he wants to recenter the left and we're talking about class versus the working class versus the elites. Oh. So the only consciousness is not identity consciousness or maybe he says it's a little bit important, but what's way more important is class consciousness. Oh, the class consciousness. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, he just basically s says that the Democrats seem to campaign in ways better suited to uh, win inspiring positive op-eds in the New York Times than actual voters. Like uh, what actual people who go to yeah, the polls and, care and about. You have to understand, like the way it, it works is like, uh, you have to get people who vote. It doesn't matter how many retweets you get. It doesn't matter how viral the New York Times get. It doesn't matter reposts on IG story. It actually comes down to the what, votes. What do you mean, Andrew? This guy's trending on the internet. Have you seen his YouTube views and his TikTok engagement? It doesn't matter if every kid in Soho retweets and reposts if they don't vote. Um, finally, his ending is, finally, I must simply assert something, the point of view that I'm not going to try to justify with empirical evidence, but that I believe both I and most of you reading believe. Most people want to come together across the differences for the good of all rather than be divided into smaller and smaller slices based on identity categories they don't control. Ooh, that was kind of a fire bar. Um, anyway, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Again, we're about to get into our quick thoughts and then the comments section. This is a complicated topic. We're Dude. not going to bet a thousand Dude. on this one, guys. You don't, you're not even going to find other YouTube Asian food channels addressing this depth. Let me tell you this. This is a spicy one. But you want to know what else is spicy? Oh, Smala, smalasauce.com from Sichuan to Sicily, guys. I'm telling you guys, there's nothing like this on the market right now. Made with real truffle. It's got Sichuan peppercorns. It'll uh, buzz in your mouth. It goes great on everything, especially pizza, pasta, and dumplings. Anyways, guys, smalasauce.com. Very high quality. It's our first CBG. Check it out. Shipping anywhere in the U.S. and Canada. My quick thought is, uh, Andrew, you know what's a good question? Is like, how much does identity matter? Is identity being pushed to the forefront of all the debates right now? Was a smoke screen to uh, distract from people doing stuff in the background? Or is it legitimately what people care about? Well, I, man, it's tough because like, I think as a minority male... I'm like, dude, identity is definitely significant. Like, you probably believe in it more than Frederick DeBoer does, Yeah, right? but I also don't know where I would rank it. Like, right. is it number one? It's probably not the number one concern. I feel like there are other things that I, are more number one, but it's not number 20. I actually think identity is almost like number one when it comes to, like, social things or, like, social interactions and pings. But as far as the role of government goes, even me, as someone who cares a lot about identity, I'm like... Yeah, I don't know if because the government would just like mess it up if they try yeah, to do it. But identity politics is still really important because America hasn't figured out and kind of like, I guess, rectify the past and things like that. So to be honest, then people are going to be like, well, America didn't solve it. So that's why we make it so important. So I guess that's their argument. It makes sense. You know what I see as the issue right now, Andrew? One side is ranking identity politics number one. Uh, identity politics number one. One side is uh, ranking it number 10. We just need to figure out where does it actually rank? Because if it ranks higher than five, then a bunch of billions of trillions of dollars needs to be like dedicated to government programs to fixing it or like getting to at least a, a part where we can agree to disagree. And if it's not below five legitimately, then we need to table it and move it to second or third tier behind infrastructure concerns. Right, right, right. Um, Andrew, another part, a quick thought, is that don't you feel like in both parties, the bulk distribution, or maybe just in a macro sense, the bulk distribution of the electorate is being pulled by the bookends on, on the curve? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the extremes are... Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of elections are determined by, like, the most extreme 15%. It's not really what most people want, but it's just what the people who all are going to go out to the polls and vote for. But do you blame the bookends for being these fiery, charismatic, like, hucksters, or whether they believe it or not? Or do you blame the bulk distribution for probably just being on Netflix, being consumeristic, and, like, being like, I don't know, you guys pull me entertain me and I'll just vote for one of you guys. Perhaps you get the democracy that you deserve. Yeah. Um, of course, I will acknowledge absolutely there's inequities. There's inequities in different ways and different things. And like, I just don't know how we're going to fix them or how we need to address them. Or is it about setting the place as equal as we can now and then addressing those things with like other supplementary, complementary programs later? Mm. Um, I just don't know, man. I just, I, I feel like everybody wishes they could hit a button and fix everything at one time, Andrew, but that's just not how it works because there's like priorities, right? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of my feeling is like the clock is broken. 
right? Now you can fix the time and move the little hands to the right time. But if the clock gears are ultimately broken, the time is going to be off eventually anyways. So you need to fix the clock, but are we still disagreeing on what the clock is? Right. And the, how to fix it? We I guess probably that's are. The next, that's the next Let's get into the comment section, guys. Like we said, this topic is very, very complicated. You guys let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And please be civil. We're just here to have like a, a good discussion about it. Um, this guy says, I'm something of a libertarian by nature, socially liberal on some issues, conservative on others. This issue says, this essay by Kevin DeBoer says much that I agree with, even though no one considers me to be a leftist. And then he said, yeah, I'm just for equal opportunity, but not equal outcome. With that said, education at a young age needs, needs to be made way more available to all they need pre like pre-k yeah. like solid everything dude we just need to examine like other countries how they're doing things and stuff like that and just test things um this guy said the left is so deeply invested in identity politics good luck putting that toothpaste back in the toothpaste uh that's funny that toothpaste tube carbon pollution highway design healthcare, education tax policy whatever issue it is the left will find racism as the root cause mm. Uh, someone else said, listen, I'm, uh, I spend a lot of time in leftist spaces online and there does seem to be some fatigue on the left when it comes to talking about and stressing identity politics, perhaps something is shifting right now. Yeah, that is interesting. I do think that, you know, there was a moment in time and I, I don't know, it's weird because you know, the political parties, Andrew, there's these like two gigantic tents, right? And not everybody, even within the tent like even agrees with each other, right? But what happens is when one of the teams loses and usually how, you know how the president for the most part, like 85% of the time, it's like you get two terms. Usually, sometimes it switches off, right? You only get one term, but it's almost like the other tent just shifts like left or right to try to win the next election. Mm -hmm. And that's why everybody in the tent is always unhappy. Right. So I'm saying it's just so goofy the two system, but then if we, otherwise you, it's a parliamentary system that's more like Australia, UK, Canada, where there's like eight parties. Right, right, right. Because they, they, they want to represent all the uh, subdivisions of each party. Someone was saying, nah, man, the Republicans don't play identity politics, man, or anywhere close to them, man. It's just the Dems that are splitting everybody into smallest groups of oppression and ranking them in a hierarchy. I mean, uh, Kevin DeBoer did say this in his video. Yeah. Uh. Also, someone was like, hey, well, you know, it is natural for people to organize around identity, but maybe there needs to be some larger identity. But how do you build that? Yeah, that's a good question. This guy said, uh, you know, I'm a minority and I was center left and I switched to the center right for all these following reasons. And they just listed out all this stuff that was basically criticizing the current version of, I guess, what they view as like the current version of the left mm. versus what it was. And you know what the interesting thing is, Andrew? Political parties are always shifting. You know what I mean? Like what what you were today is not there. Like Mitt Romney, he loses, so the Mitt Romney country club guys are out. You know, and they get bringing right. a new guy, uh, Sarah Palin. You know, exactly. more excitable. Right, 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 right. You're saying like even the the Republican or the Democrat of. 40 years ago is like not the same as it was today. And sometimes I almost like feel like they just shift to win, not even out of some sense of what they believe in. Right. They yeah. literally are just like shifting a product. They, they, it's almost like uh, Tim Cook versus Steve Jobs. You know, Steve Jobs believed in just like what Steve Jobs believed in, but Tim Cook as the CEO of Apple's kind of like, oh, that makes a little bit more money for the shareholders. Let's do that. Let's not change the iPhone for like 10 times. This guy said, all I know is that depending on where you live, you're not going to get too far in politics if you alienate or vilify white suburban married couples who want a nuclear family, one vehicle or two vehicles in a yard. People still want that life. A lot of them vote too. <laughs> and then uh, somebody said, come on, to think that only white people want that life is wrong. There's a lot of young minorities, second generation that want that traditional lifestyle too. Yeah, yeah, no, that's actually, honestly true and I think that when it comes to don't think of it as a white suburban life but just a well-rounded suburban life actually a lot of people want that and, and they're minorities too yeah, yeah. because uh the one thing that I uh, will say is lost in all this hustle culture and like get rich stuff online Andrew is that uh you got to work really hard to get really rich some people they want to work like medium hard at their job work like 45 hours a week and then really enjoy a lot of free time with their family and uh pursuits mm -hmm. outside of career and uh monetization right um somebody was saying that you know the republicans they just need to let me uh let abortion go through they need to stop hurting the climate they need to stop targeting people with uh lgbtq identities and they need to stop embracing anti-intellectualism and i will come back mm. 
And then, yeah, it was pretty much like, can the Republicans just refocus on fiscal conservatism rather than social conservatism? Because that's what I would rather vote for. Right. And um, I guess a lot of these comments, Andrew, were from people, I guess, you know, not exactly like Kevin DeBoer, the, the writer of this article, but they are like white people who are sick of identity politics. Right, They, right, they right. might even be like very left. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, nowadays, it's almost like everybody's reacting to everybody else. So I'm not, I'm almost like, I don't know who cares and who's just counter punching to a punch, you know? I guess it's tough because... A lot of people feel like they do the right things and they still don't get seen as equal or they don't get equal opportunity. And so that is wrong. But how do you solve that? Because as an Asian guy, even I feel like obviously we talk about on this channel a lot in a different sense, maybe not like financially, but definitely socially Asian guys get underrated like 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 we're not seen as everyone else. We're not treated like everyone else from men and women. You know right. what I mean? So I'm saying, obviously, I still see that identity is important. But even me, as an Asian guy who does suffer from identity, from having the Asian American identity right now, I'm like, dang, I kind of like, yeah, I guess there are. I don't know. Is this the biggest issue right now? I guess if I just try harder, I can, I can ignore it and I can just rise above it in my mind, right? Right. But is that asking a lot from people, or is that what people are asking? minority people to do yeah it's a really really good question i mean i think that that's why this article went so viral it's like uh i thought they really it's funny because he's mad at the left for pointing out what's wrong without a unifying vision but then he's sort of pointing out what was wrong with the left in general right so yeah um this guy said it all just comes down to sports guys as much as we want to say we want to get over identity politics it seems like identities have become sports teams and sports are such a powerful force in human society precisely because they harness primal instincts that pulse through our psyche the fact that teams can command with such deep violent loyalty based on absolutely nothing but being in the same town as fans is incredible, basically. Right. And he was saying that the identities have broken down into sports teams. Yo, maybe, maybe the sports needs to bring back the unity, man. These players need to stop signing and get traded everywhere because now it's breaking apart America. Because it used to be better when, oh, like, the whole city could just rally behind, like, one person, whether it was, like, white, black, Asian, whatever. Everybody just rallies behind the team. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, ultimately, Andrew, like we said, this comment, uh, this article sparked maybe, like, 100,000 comments on the American internet arguing back and forth. I mean, it was a very, very complicated topic. But, um, yeah, I, I, my major takeaway is that, like, man, I really just think I can see why people don't even want to vote anymore. Mm. Because like you said, if the narrative on both sides is being pulled by the most charismatic people on the bookends and the middle people are sort of like, oh, I don't know, like I'll just kind of go because I know voting is like a good thing to do. They, they're, they're just, they are staying uneducated, waiting to be pulled by the most entertaining person. Yeah. I think that can people even unify over like two issues? Like what are the top two issues for America? Can we even agree on that or at least agree on that at different like levels because i feel like a lot of families are concerned about safety and education right because that that's, that's what you would if you had safety kids that's what you would care about right? yeah but then safety it also what makes it safe there's also like drugs there's the drug trade there's guns that also could make it less safe for children uh there's also like all these other things right. policing and yeah, then it's policing. funny because policing and gun uh like liberation or whatever gun rights they're like on opposite ends yeah <laughs> it's so crazy but they're related to so you want more police but then you want uh, and then you wanted but you got to deal with the drugs and then it's like all this i don't know man Yo, uh this guy he did point out in the article i saw this comment they're saying in michigan it was really interesting because they were uh, there was a town that was like usually mostly like old whites right and there was a big influx of immigrants from mostly muslim countries right so they were trying to ban some of the head garb or like the religious symbols like on the buildings but then so they disagreed that was a conservative versus uh religious issue right but then when it came to banning certain books that were pushing like certain identities in the schools those two sides that were against each other on the signage agreed so there are some values that lined up yeah so it was like so what which side is who voting for now you know what i'm saying i'm saying that it's so like complicated right 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 yeah i mean long story short guys i just think that 
I think that structures like education, safety, you know, law and order, I think they're really important. I also think the government subsidized vocational training is really important for anybody who wants to sign up and actually complete it. Mm -hmm. And I also think some sort of optional like civil service, military service opt-in that can get you like some extra credits in life without needing to go to war would maybe bring some national like, unity yeah, together. serve your country domestically. But not go to war. Right, right. Because right. that's the big thing. People don't. People like the benefits of going to the military. They don't want to go to war for something that they don't understand. Right, yeah. I, oh, you guys let us know in the comments down below what do you think are the main issues that people need to unite around. Can we ever get to a point where it's like, we're all, we are all different, but we're together on this. Is there anything that America can actually be together on? Yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, keep it civil. Until next time with the Hot Pot Boys, we out. Peace.